Hello, church. It's Wednesday. And I want to thank you for continually inviting me into your home and uh, for us to be able to think together and talk together. I also want to uh, thank you for the, for the nice feedback that's, that many of you have sent back to me and just telling that the messages and the devotionals have been helpful. And some of you have even passed them on to friends and family beyond the church. And I hope that they've been helpful to those people at all uh, as well. And I, uh, I want to thank you for a third reason. And that is because some of you have responded to Chris's invitation to send in video greetings. And uh, we have several. So we'll show some at the end of this uh, devotional. And in coming weeks, uh, we'll continue to do that until we're all together again. So... Uh, I thought that it would be appropriate for these coming weeks uh, for us to spend some time in the Psalms. The Psalms is a special kind of literature in the Bible. It is poetry. And the Psalms teach us about God, but they also teach us how to express ourselves, how to express our feelings, our, our passion, our disappointments, our fears, our frustrations, our hurts, our confusion but also our love and our gratitude. Mm -hmm. Today, I want to uh, lead us in a consideration of Psalm 1. It's uh, one of my favorite Psalms. It's, it's like the, one of the bookends of the Psalms. There's 150 uh, Psalms in the whole gathering of Psalms. And Psalm 1 is like an introduction, and it introduces us to two kinds of lives, two ways of living, and two um, outcomes, two, two ways of, uh, of coming to a conclusion in your life. So I'm going to read the entire psalm, but then I'm really going to focus on the first three. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step, in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Then it goes to talk about the foolish, uh, those who, who mock God, who want nothing to do with God, and it says, contrary to a tree, they are like chaff. You know what chaff is? It's that thin membrane kind of stuff that falls off of wheat when it's gone through the threshing mill. And, and then they uh, throw the, the grain up in the air, and the chaff is so light that the wind just blows it away. So two kinds of lives. But as we think about this analogy, that a godly person is like a tree, um, that's that's precious to me, uh, and I hope to make it precious to you as well. Um, when I was uh, just starting out in ministry, I was serving a church in rural uh, Pennsylvania, and there was a, a, a gentleman, he was a country farmer, but he was also a, an outdoorsman, and he knew the forests, he knew the trees. His name is Ken Comstock, and Ken and I would take walks in the woods, and he would help me learn to identify different kinds of hardwood trees. Uh, the difference between a copper beech and a, a birch, or an oak and a maple, a walnut and a chestnut, and so on, by their bark, by the branching, and by the shape of the leaves. Uh, leaves. And it, it was a blessed time. And Ken, he just, he loved trees, and I remember early on, when we were talking about trees, he, by memory, recited to me that wonderful poem by Joyce Kilmer entitled Tree. And Joyce Kilmer writes, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom snow has lain 
who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Well, Joyce Kilmer, he uh, had some, some serious crisis in his life. He died as a very young man in World War I, but before that, he was going through a powerful struggle. And he had a friend named James Holliday who stood by him and helped him go through that difficult time. And he wrote of James Holliday, he said, he was to me like a mighty oak. What a wonderful thing to think that we could be like a mighty oak in somebody else's life. But I want to take this analogy of a tree and I want to help us look at it through three ways. Three ways in which the analogy, the tree works for us. And uh, so like a tree, we are steadied and rooted by a deep root system. I uh, lived in a state park that was mostly populated by poplar trees. And poplar trees are beautiful. They make great lumber, long, you know, 30 foot uh, stretches without any branches, just clear lumber, and they're beautiful. Uh, but we had a storm back in 2010 that came through a powerful, uh, almost a hurricane or a mini tornado kind of storm that went through that forest and just took these beautiful poplar trees and just tore them up, threw them left and right. And in the middle of that rubble of, of uh, poplar trees was an oak tree. And it stood strong and steady in the midst of all the disaster. Why did the poplar trees fail and the oak tree stand strong? Well, because uh, poplar trees have shallow root systems. Their roots glow close to the surface. You could say that they are like superficial. Uh, but an oak tree, it has a tap root and it sinks its roots deep into the ground and can withstand uh, terrible uh, storms and gusts. And I think that's true for a person of God. I think that as we, as the psalmist says, who, uh, whose delight is in the law of the Lord, which means the word of God, not just rules, but God's laws for living. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his word he meditates day and night. There's a, a, a great verse in, in Paul's letter to the Corinthians when he says uh, that, he says, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in the faith, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Rooted and grounded in him. We can sink our roots into a deep foundation, into a spiritual foundation, which in the end is what our essence is, that we are spiritual creatures. And this is a spiritual reality that when we sink our roots into God and into God's word, we can stand strong. A second thing about uh, a tree, which is like us, is that we are renewed and sustained by inner resources, by unseen resources. You know, a tree... Uh, when you look at it, you have no idea what's keeping it alive unless you know that the roots go down into where the water is. And so the roots go down and they seek water and that sustains them. I had a pin oak tree that I planted in my yard and I enjoyed it for a couple of years uh, until a storm destroyed it. But um, it was remarkable because we had other hardwood trees and in the fall, the leaves would, would all come off. But the pin oak tree held on to its leaves until the springtime. And I was curious about that. So I asked, and what they told me was that in the springtime, what pushes the dead leaves off is the new life that's coming up into the tree, the new sap. Jesus had a conversation with a woman at the well, a Samaritan woman, and he was sitting at the well resting 
and she came along and she had a, a, a water vessel and he asked her to give him a drink and she said, well, how can you, a Jew, ask me uh, to give you a, a drink? And Jesus said, uh, if you knew who it was that was asking you for a drink, you would ask of him and he would give you living water that would well up into eternal life. Living water. Jesus was referring to the Holy Spirit welling up within us, dwelling and enriching us and nourishing us, sustaining us, if you will, uh, in the life of faith. And uh, the third thing about trees and about us is that like a tree, a godly person gives back to the world. Just to think about some of the things that trees provide. They provide shade. Oh, how thankful we are for shade when the sun's beating down on us. Trees provide shelter. Trees provide fuel. Trees provide food. Trees provide uh, lumber. And uh, I want to be more specific, though, because I thought this was fascinating, that um, a mature tree uh, absorbs heat in the atmosphere and cools the earth down. A mature tree uh, puts 75 gallons of water back into the atmosphere every day. A mature tree removes toxic gases and supplies enough oxygen for 10 people to live on for a year. Isn't that fantastic? And it provides, uh, there are substances in a tree that are used for various kinds of medicines. Trees give back. And they take out the toxins in the world. I think one of the things that godly people can do is to help detoxify our world. That as God's love flows through us, as God's grace pours into us and over us, we can have a cleansing, a renewing, a healing effect in the community that we live in. I uh, think about Paul's letter in the psalm. It says that uh, that that tree, like a tree that bears fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and whatever it does, it prospers. Paul, writing to his friends in the, in the Philippians, or in, in, I'm sorry, in Galatians chapter 5, he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And there are nine fruit of the Spirit. Things, qualities, virtues that the Holy Spirit uh, develops in us as we seek his blessing. And those fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, that our lives could be adorned with that kind of fruit. And it can be as we sink our roots, as we draw nourishment from our living Lord. You and I, we can be like trees. We can give back to the world. We can live on those deep inner resources that the, that the material world knows nothing about, about the resources of God, about living water. And we can stand strong in tough times. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, may we continue to sink our roots deep into the Lord and into his word, that we may become like trees. God bless you. Have a good day. And now, some warm greetings from some of your friends. Hello to our Paulson family. This is Gail and Mary. We miss you all terribly, but hopefully <laughs> we'll be back soon. Bye. <laughs> Beautiful big smiles from our singing duo, Dick and Arlene Kentz. Good morning. Thank you for the great idea to keep in touch and also for all you do. I love the messages. Easter service was particularly beautiful because of the photography behind you was facing right past Wild Horse to my neighborhood. Thank you for all you're doing for all of us. 
and I hope that this works for me. Um, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm so happy we have all the ways to keep in touch with our families and friends. Thank you again, and God bless you. Hi, Easter friends. It's March Bergen. I'm back in Polson, and I really can hardly wait until I can see you in person, each of you. Until then, please try to stay healthy and be safe. Bye. Rocky and Linda Anderson remembering their trip to Hawaii. Hi, this is Nancy. And Chuck. And here we are at our Montana home. Which is as good a place to be if you're going to be stuck someplace. We are happy to be here, but we are missing everybody at church. Hope to see you soon. Bye.